So you guys remember that thing, the time when I was like, man, I'm really not going to make any more videos out of anger. Well, this has to be the one exception. Okay, uh, this video isn't going to perform very well. All right, so does anyone else feel like the quality of the anime fan experience is completely different between men and women? Well, back when you made this video, and even now in current year, anime has pretty much remained almost the same. Because anime isn't made for specific people, much like it used to be before. In fact, it's made for everyone. It's unisex. And there's nothing that says that women can't enjoy games or even movies or TV shows or anime for that matter. Because they're made for a specific audience. I've been a fan of anime since childhood. After Sailor Moon, I mean, come on, it was over. And Toei still owns my ass to this day. But when I was a kid, there wasn't really a vast community of anime fans in the way that there are today. I'm not going to retread old ground here, but essentially what, what I'm going to say is exactly what I said before. Anime back when you were a kid was much different because it had just come stateside. Sailor Moon was one of the first, and so was Dragon Ball Z, and even Pokemon for that matter. So when you have a community of fans, yeah, it's not going to be very large because no one knows what it is. But now, because it's readily available due to the internet era, everything is possible. The only way I could learn about new anime titles was from DVD ads, TV, manga from my local Barnes and Nobles, and just mere chance. I didn't have any reference for what was good or popular. It was just kind of the Wild West. Well, back then, the internet was still growing. So you had things like AOL chat rooms, and you also had Yahoo Messenger. And if you were lucky, you had your own little GeoCities website. And also, there were publications at the time like New Type Magazine, which is, I, I guess, what started me to get to watching Azumanga Daya when I first saw it. An anime that was specifically made for women. By the way, that'll become relevant here later on in the video. But that meant that my anime viewing experience was also completely independent. Sure, maybe I had one friend who could recommend a show, but as a kid watching episodes of season one on Naruto on three parts on YouTube because there was a time limit for how long you could upload your videos, let's just say it was a really different experience than it is today. And if you ever watched anime that way, then you officially certify for a veteran's discount. But now we have a very clear idea of what's popular basically immediately due to websites like Crunchyroll making anime so easily accessible and platforms like YouTube creating a space for a whole community on anime discussion. YouTube is a website that allows everybody and anybody to have a voice. I mean, unfortunately, that's the side effect. And I'm one of those people. So why do I feel like I disagree with about 80% of what the anime community agrees is good and popular? As you will find out through the rest of this video, it's really because you're going to cherry pick a bunch of arguments that don't exist. You're going to say things that you don't understand about shows that you refuse to understand. This is where I'm going to start losing a lot of my uh, credibility because a lot of this is based off of just raw emotion. And as much as I hate to use that as a weapon, I'm going to have to let it just be its own thing. I, I don't believe anything that you're going to say in this video. I don't believe that you'll ever say anything of importance in the rest of this video. And it's because you have uh, previously made videos where you say that Tumblr is your main source of information when it comes to these things. Which means that when uh, Twitter used to be a place where anybody could do everything, then uh, the Tumblr people came over to Twitter and started policing everything, harassing Japanese artists, and saying that things need to be made for them. You're one of those people, and I don't like you for it. Let me be clear, this isn't a slam on other YouTubers or the anime community in particular. Taste itself is completely objective. Just because I like something doesn't mean that it's actually good. That's subjective. The word that you're looking for is subjective, and also that your taste is good, that, that is also very subjective. But I feel like I've watched a ton of videos where fans praise the new hype anime of the season, and then if I go check it out, I'm like... <laughs> really? So because one show out of the literal hundreds, if not thousands, have something different in it, you chose to choose this one. You chose this Fire Force example, the one that everyone will choose, because it's going to make your example. 
So I guess if we're going by that logic, almost every show that I watch that has the same CalArts style, like Steven Universe, well, that's bad because I don't like to look at the bean-shaped mouth thing. But you see how stupid that is? Do you see how dumb that is? When things like Gumball exist and that show's actually good? And let's be clear, it is always male fans. Because while female Annie YouTubers exist, I've noticed that actually trying to find them is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Did you ever once think that maybe it's because women would rather be doing something else? Like, I'm not trying to like shit on women for this specifically, because it could be the same for men too. But the core audience for anime is typically men. So if women are into it, and there's only a few, then if they choose to make a YouTube channel where they talk about anime, like, that's completely their choice. Or do they have to make a YouTube channel? I I'm still not really getting your ideas that you're throwing out here. And again, I'm really not trying to call out any male any youtubers It's not like they're wrong. Their opinions are just formed from a different place than mine. That's because you want your biases confirmed. You want somebody that is a woman to tell you what women like. And the ones that you did find, well, apparently they're just not cutting it. And as much as I don't like Aki Dearest, she has way more interest and watches way more things than you'll probably ever hope to consume as far as anime is concerned. But the problem is with the way that the YouTube community and the anime industry are structured so that there are more opportunities for works made by and for men to be promoted over works made by or for women. So I guess people like Rumiko Takahashi just don't exist. You know, the one that made Inuyasha, Ranma One Half, and a couple of other various shows that people still enjoy to this day. In fact, I think that they're still promoted way more than the other stuff. I definitely don't see a lot of big anime series getting quite the clout that uh, Rumiko Takahashi has, where she essentially just kind of pioneered the entire movement herself. And really, that's not just a problem with YouTube, but rather our society and culture as a whole consistently stacking the deck against women in thousands of little ways. And oh boy, I am not going to be able to open that particular can of worms right now. It's not that you can't, it's just that you won't. Because you know that everything that you're talking about is almost based off of bullshit. In fact, I was able to look at your chart here about the how men work and they make more than women that work in the same profession. Well, I can go ahead and tell you that that's a load of shit. I'm sorry to disappoint, but that's not actually true. And in order to do the actual YouTuber thing that I criticize others for doing, let me go ahead and refer you to the factual feminist who actually debunks this with great points, might I add. Women earn 77 cents for every dollar a man earns for doing the same work. Now, no matter how many times this wage gap claim is decisively refuted by economists, including feminist economists, it always comes back. The bottom line, the 23 cent gender pay gap is simply the difference between the average earnings of all men and women working full time. It doesn't take into account differences in occupation, positions, education, job tenure, hours worked per week. When such relevant factors are considered, the wage gap narrows to the point of vanishing. I'm not going to turn this into a It's a Gundam video, but I think that you would at least like to know that if you're going to bring up a stupid fucking table, then you might as well bring up the fact that you're wrong with it. But it's clear to me that the kind of person I am, which is at least partially shaped by the experiences of my gender and my preferences and taste in what anime I like or think is good, is not particularly represented in the people talking about anime in the community. Did you know that there are some females that actually watch these anti-tubers, the same ones that you don't like watching, and they're perfectly fine with their opinions? In fact, I'm surprised that they're pretty okay with mine as well. But again, I don't think it has anything to do with your gender. I just think that you have little exposure to the thing that you're actually talking about, besides the very minuscule things that you wanted to see that were just like Sailor Moon. And so everything else just kind of falls off the wayside. And that's not to discredit anything that you've ever experienced. In fact, I would say that it's a benefit. But I don't like to blame me being black on the reason I don't like certain shows, or the fact that I'm a man so I don't have to worry about watching other shows that have... Like, I don't know, girls in it. Which causes me to have opinions like this. Part 1, breaking news, modern isekai is really overhyped. Overhyped? Probably not. But if you were to say that there's a lot of isekai, then I'd be more than inclined to agree. I think that there's uh, far too many. But with anything that might be good or a trend at the time, 
it will eventually just get watered down by so many different variants. So for it to be overhyped, that's a little bit of a stretch. So, uh, we can agree that we're tired of isekai, right? Like, that's a point that we've all reached collectively as a whole. No, I think people have standards, and their standards want them to have better isekai, not just more isekai. I think that the number problem is very real. In fact, I think that there's a little bit too many, me personally. But if there were about five more that came out, and they all had different stories, and I ended up liking one of them, then I don't think I'd get tired of isekai. I know I am, and I've watched maybe four isekai anime in the past five years. Now, you may be wondering, how could I be sick of an entire genre that I haven't even watched very much of? Isekai anime has oversaturated seasonal anime for the past couple of years, true, but I don't really keep up with seasonal anime past one or maybe two shows that I really like. So if I'm not actively seeking out isekai anime, how am I sick of it? Isekai has not only oversaturated the anime industry, but also the community of people just talking about the concept of isekai in the anime industry. If you're seeing large numbers of isekai, that's because they keep performing well. If it wasn't performing well, then they would stop. It's kind of like how zombie games don't really exist that much anymore because people are tired of the co-op shoot zombies genre, and we're more focused on battle royale games that we're still playing in the current year. And you might say, well, that makes sense. If the industry is making more of the genre, then obviously people who are fans of or who their job is to talk about the industry, then they're obviously going to talk more about the genre. That just makes sense. But the thing is, I do like isekai. There's nothing inherently wrong with isekai as a premise or even a genre. I probably don't have to explain this, but I will just in case my mom is watching this or something. Isekai, when directly translated, means a different world. It is a very specific type of escapist genre defined as a normal person on Earth either traveling slash being magically transported slash being reborn in a new parallel universe slash fantasy world. Overall, it's a very gentle method of storytelling because the main character will ostensibly be the audience proxy. So the author can info dump about whatever lore or world mechanic they want because it's equally new to the main character and the audience. Sounds like a good rundown and you have a very firm grasp on what isekai is. So if you know this and you don't want to watch the ones that are bad, then why are we making this video? By having the main character be only one step away from being a self-insert, it also allows the audience to be lost in the magical escapist fantasy of being able to fight dragons or not be crushed under the pressures of capitalist society. You know, I was going to point out something like, um, you know that people, it's, it's fine. You know what? Just get on with your point. I'm not even going to try to debunk this stupid capitalism thing. Just say you're a commie and get it over with. Because of its easy accessibility as a premise, most isekai are usually pretty cushy wish fulfillment, which I wouldn't actually have a problem with, but then Sword Art Online accidentally ruined the isekai genre forever. Well, basically up until now. Hear me out. Please let me be clear, I have absolutely no opinion about SAO. I somehow managed to completely miss the boat when it became popular, probably because I was sailing on a different Titan-shaped boat at the time. Well, it sucks to be you if you're still on that Titan boat, considering how the you-know-what happens at the very end. So I basically completely missed the train of it becoming popular, and then critically panned, and then leveling out to where it is now, where it's sort of in this ambiguous state of people just enjoying it on their own terms. Sword Art Online doesn't have really any super sexual explicit scenes. It's just a show that may every so often have a uh, tentacle moment, or the one main villain just being a really creepy shithead. But... For this, nasty, fetishy, sexual assault scenes? I'm sorry, but in current year, if you know that that's going to happen and you never saw it, then why in the world did you look for it? I only mention this to make it clear that I have no personal feelings about SAO at all. Like, I liked the Abridged series made by Something Witty. It was so good, even knowing nothing about it, that it managed to make me cry over an abridged series of something that I hadn't actually seen the original of. So power to them, I guess. But SAO's popularity caused a wave of hyper-specific renewed interest in the isekai genre, 
Uh, but only in a very specific male power fantasy, pretending not to be a harem, but it's totally a harem, who are we kidding boys, kind of specificity. Ah yes, the rising of a shield hero. Definitely the biggest male power fantasy where you go to an isekai world where you know no one and know nothing and you get accused of raping a woman because apparently that's what the power fantasy is for men is to be accused of crimes that they didn't commit. Oh wait, what's that right next to it? ReZero, another anime, a male power fantasy anime where the main character, a man, gets repeatedly murdered and killed and then brought back to life to experience the same pain over and over again? Nothing says love me some fucking power fantasy like dying a bunch of times and seeing people in front of me die and then I get to relive that pain again if I fuck it up. I, I, at this point, I don't even know if you deserve a full video. Jeff Thews certainly didn't get a full video when he made all that stupid shit up about Goblin Slayer. I think you're on your way out. And that kind of sucks, because before this point, isekai was just a fantasy genre, and it could be made for men or women. Hey, did we forget that Inuyasha, like I mentioned earlier, exists? Or does that also not count because you don't see it as an isekai? Or maybe you, de you just never watched it? It's hard to really gauge what you know because you sound so unintelligent. Part 2, isekai for women. Yeah, so does anyone remember when isekai could also be made for women? Yeah, I do. They've dated all the way back to the early 90s, all the way up to now. But I guess you're gonna, you know, forget about those, or maybe you'll list them. Let's see if you surprise me. It may be difficult to remember, but once I started to think about it, I was able to rattle off quite a few. There was Magic Knight's Rearth, Fushiyuki, Escaflone, The Twelve Kingdoms. Oh, and there's this other little known series. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's pretty niche. It's called fucking goddamn Inuyasha. Yes, and I'm pretty sure most of those were very highly received. But I guess you're going to try to spin this into a negative for some reason. Now, I'm not going to act like any of these series were masterpieces, except you, actual novel of the Twelve Kingdoms. Your anime was spotty, but you were so good. And frankly, you deserve a reboot. I'll say it. Actually, you know what? I take that all back. They all deserve a reboot. And do you know why? It's because of something very specific they all have in common. Can you guess what it is? Is it because they were beloved by men and women across the world? Because I don't know if you know this, but Magic Knight Ray Earth, while being an anime, was also a video game for the Sega Saturn. And it was one of the releases that actually made it here to America. And it had full voice acting and anime cutscenes in the game. But I'm sure we're still going to uh, point out something very obvious that I think that even a two-year-old would be able to notice. It's that they're all over 20 years old. Oh, okay. Well, that's that was definitely not it. So old thing is bad now because it's old? I mean, I can point out some different examples for you if you want some more recent isekai anime for women. Saga of Tanya the Evil. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. Kakurio, Bed and Breakfast for Spirits, and Restaurant to Another World. Those are all isekai made for women. I mean, it's made for everyone because it, no one can not watch it. But they're series that you didn't even bother to bring up. Maybe it's because you want to push a narrative and then people would say that I'm trying to push one. But if you're going to exclude those series from coming out, which by the way, those are no more than maybe two or three years old, you still for some reason feel like it just doesn't exist. So either you're being willfully negligent, or you're just this stupid. But good or not, at least they were made. And they weren't clones of each other. The premise or tone or genre were all wildly different, even the ones that were being made for men. Kiyo Karamaho was dangerously close to being a BL, although it never really committed to anything substantial. And Mar was a shonen battle isekai with fairy tale characters and tropes. Back then, there wasn't a definitive isekai anime you could point to and be like, yeah, that's the isekai anime that spawned dozens of clones trying to ride the coattails of its popularity. You would hate to find out about the harem genre then, because harems, while more popular than they, you know, are now, they still were very popular back in the 90s and the early 2000s, and I think it kind of stopped with The World Only God Knows, which is hailed as one of the best harem anime of all time but again if we're going to compare like for like i mean sure you can make that assumption but it's also wrong so the genre wasn't so samey the way it is now where 
isekai is like some sort of nightmarish hydra and the more heads that are cut off two more bland knockoffs are spawned from the roots did you know that yu yu haka show a, a show made for men i guess it's technically kind of an isekai if you really think hard about it um, that spawned another clone of the same kind in bleach or at least it was inspired bleach was inspired by yu yu haka show don't at me but again it's not bad to take influence or inspiration from something that came from before like, I'm not kidding. The isekai genre became so popular, the anime industry was able to make a whole subgenre of also super popular anime just to subvert the isekai genre. Shows like Konosuba, ReZero, the one with the mom that I don't know the name of. Don't worry, you're doing great with the one with the mom that we don't know the name of. And here's the thing we've gone so far into isekai fever that companies have actually come full circle and have started to adapt the good isekai novels that were made for women. What do you mean by made for women? I don't think that we've ever established that. Do we mean isekai where the main character is female? Because those exist, and they may not exist in large quantities like you want them to, but they do exist nonetheless. Do you remember when I said that I've watched maybe four isekai in the past five years? Well, guess what the last two of them were? It was a sentence of a bookworm and then my next life as a villainess. So what you're saying essentially is that you skipped over all of the other isekai for women, quote unquote, and now you want to make this a point so you can be ignorant about it. Got it. And you know what? They were both great, especially a sentence of a bookworm. I'm going to have to actually circle back to Bookworm in a later video because I have some thoughts. But, 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 the thing is, I kind of hate this. It feels like I've had a whole genre taken away from me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Ever since I looked over at the police genre over on my anime list, I don't have the same kind of buddy cop anime that I wanted to see, like Dirty Pair Flash or Gunsmith Cats. But, you know, tomato, tomato. Had it repackaged for the male gaze until it finally became so popular that it became crushed under its own weight. And then they finally decided to allow women to make isekai again and then acted like we should be grateful for it. Can you point to any of those clips where people are saying that you should be thankful that you're getting any isekai for women? Point to them. Like, even Mother's Basement isn't that fucking dense to say something so stupid. So you're just talking conjecture at this point. And that bites. I'm not a fan of that. And that's a really tough thing to have to be okay with. And it's frustrating because this isn't a problem limited to the isekai genre, but also the whole anime industry as a whole. So you say something stupid and then you have nothing else to back it up with? You know what, let me bring up that picture yet again. So in this picture that you're the one that made, by the way, you can see that there are three anime YouTubers talking about this. One of them being Mother's Basement, God rest his soul. I mean, he's not dead, he's, he's just kind of stupid. But in all three of these, I can give them at least this much credit. They're talking about why you should watch Ascendants of a Bookworm. Because it's a good isekai. In fact, even one of them is calling it the perfect kind of isekai. Mother's Basement says the art of world building, where he tells you about the world in which these characters live in and how it is so well crafted that you have to watch it. And even the last one, is it worth watching? You wanted more people to give you more recommendations. And so now, because it's not a woman giving you the same recommendation, well, it's just them saying that you should be fucking grateful. How stupid can you be? Part 3, Anime for Women. What do you think the ratio of anime marketed for women versus anime marketed towards men is? Knowing you and your track record so far, I can almost guarantee that you're not going to have any facts to back up anything that you're saying. In an ideal world, considering that the gender ratio of humans is roughly 50-50, you would assume that media should also be made 50-50. Well, yeah, in an ideal world, that would pretty much be what it is at 50-50. But unfortunately, it's not. So for every 101 men, there are 100 women. Maybe some media isn't gendered and it doesn't lean very heavily one way or the other, and it's neutral. So maybe actually it should be split into thirds. 
Well, that's kind of stupid because Nielsen ratings are what we use here, at least in North America, to find out how exactly people are watching and who's watching. The Nielsen Media Research also provides statistics on specific demographics. As such, factors influence advertising rates as age, gender, race, economic class, and area. That's why typically, if you turn on TV land, you're going to see a lot of boomer commercials about insurance and medications. Whereas if you turn on something like MTV, for example, you'll see a lot of general car insurance or Taco Bell. Thanks to the Nielsen ratings, they can kind of tell who's watching what at certain times of the day and on what devices that they're watching it. That's why typically, when you see Crunchyroll or Funimation, to their credit, start to make something and focus an ad push for something, that's because they have the ratings in front of them. It also, in some way, might help influence what anime gets made and who gets to view it. That's why you'll see more isekai anime be made than something like a police show, for example. But... As you have probably guessed, we don't live in a perfect world. I know, I can hardly believe it. Am I right, guys? I was going to say something completely mean, but I'm just going to leave it for later. Right, so as much as I would love to have like a chart and a graph and be able to look at all the hard data about anime production and the gender disparities between test groups, uh, for some reason there just isn't a lot of data about that. Even with, like, more mainstream subjects, like, outside of anime, like, just normal books, it's hard to find any substantial studies. You know, here's something very insignificant, and I'm going to bring this up because you put it in your video. This picture about boys are doctors, girls are nurses, well, that's not true. And the fact that we're trying to use this in a video as somewhat of a gotcha to, you know, kind of shit on men, let me be very clear with you. When I got hurt at my job... The female doctor was the one that helped me get medication, helped me get therapy that I needed, and also was the one that covered me when I was out of work for almost a year. And so, what did the male doctors do? Well, they didn't really have any conclusive evidence. And in the small case that they did with one doctor, I was able to get more medications that I needed. And then I tried to become uh, not very reliant on them. Just a little small necro story for you if you really wanted to know. It's just something about this picture specifically pissed me off because, again, if it's a man that has to be the doctor, well, this is just unfair to women, despite there being women doctors. I found a couple of articles saying that books written by men were more likely to be reviewed by magazines, but that's not really what I'm looking for. Maybe I'm doing research in the wrong place. I'm just not sure. Because it all amounts to bullshit. And in the case that there is some kind of gender disparity between everything, where something's just not adding up and 2 plus 2 is equaling purple, well, those are getting called out rightfully so. And as I mentioned in a video prior to this, when it came to Apple's practices per se, they had the Apple card, where female participants were just not able to get an Apple card, but men were more likely to be given a higher credit limit, and they were approved a lot more often. And that was a bad practice, and anybody that thinks that it's good is obviously off the rocker. So instead, I decided to do a experiment with some bad science where I just did a very small sample and collected the data myself. So in layman's terms, we shouldn't listen to a goddamn thing you're about to say because it's all based off of nonsense and bullshit. If we right now go to Crunchyroll and check the popular anime category and scroll through everything in order of popularity... It's basically all shown in battle anime until we get to Fruits Basket doing the Lord's work where she has fought for her place at the top at 23rd place. Woo! Ah, I forgot my two favorite battles shown in anime, Rent-A-Girlfriend, and also the other one, my teen romantic comedy snafu. How could I have forgotten such timeless classics, including like the tournament arc that's in them? Did you, did you read over any of this? Just by chance, I, I don't really know if you did. I, I'm going to go ahead and just assume you didn't. But did you actually look at anything that you recorded to make these points? So clearly there's some disparity there. But even if we put aside clarifiers like popular or good, the amount of anime being made for men versus women is already at a significant imbalance. If you want a list of anime that are with female leads, that's anime for women, then, I mean, there's a bunch of those. But for this specific purpose, I'm going to bring up Redo of Healer, which, uh, you know, it's something that 
obviously came out after the fact of this video, but it's still relevant nonetheless. Redo of Healer Female Viewership is Higher Than Average, which is an article by Anime Corner. According to the author of the Redo of Healer Light novel, Sakiya Rui, female viewership of the anime adaptation is higher than the average when it comes to anime in general. Streaming websites' membership data allowed to make the calculations possible. Again, anime isn't just made for men, and it's not just made for women. It's made for everybody, with their own different taste. That's why some of the things like shoujo and shonen don't really mean anything, because, you know, everybody can watch them. For the sake of this experiment, we'll go to myanimelist.net. Let's look at TV anime made in the summer of 2019, and uh, we'll only look at the new anime, so no continuing series. Why specifically the summer of 2019 for this test sample? I mean, if we're going based off of your rules, no matter when it was made, you're glad that they exist, right? So why not anything from maybe a year ago, or maybe two years ago? Or hell, maybe within the last decade? All told, that's seven new shonen anime series. And again, that's only new anime. We're not counting the 16 continuing series. Now, let's change our search to shoujo, and oh, there's none. There's no new anime. It's only continuing anime, and there's only four of those. And uh, the only one that isn't absolutely for children is Fruits Basket. Do you know that there's actually a lot of men that watch those shows? It's kind of like that weird My Little Pony thing where it's meant to be for little girls, but like 30-year-old neckbeards watch it. And I'm sorry if you actually like My Little Pony. I think that the Gajinka girls are actually really cute for that. Hmm. Well, okay, maybe it's an age problem. Let's try older audiences, like Sanin. All right, that's, uh, that's only three to five. That's pretty small. Now let's see Yose. There's only one new series. It's Try Nights. There's nothing fucking here. There's nothing for adult women, let alone shoujo. Am I going to watch Try Nights? No. Do you know why? Because it's terrible. Now you just kind of sound ungrateful. I'm pretty sure Try Nights is actually pretty decent, but again, you know, that's subjective. So let's just say that you don't care about it, because obviously you don't, because you think it's terrible. So what's stopping you from watching the older series? Like, what's stopping you from going back in time or watching maybe a show that's a year old? Because you sure as shit love to bring up Sailor Moon and that keeps getting fucking rebooted. Now, I would by no means call this a good study. It's more like a fun experiment. But when we look at anime by category, it's pretty stark. You know, you've been cherry picking a lot so far in this last example. And I think you're going to cherry pick even harder on this next example. We can actually break these down by demographic and see the difference. You know, you like to bring up how all of these different things like shoujo and seinen don't have that many things happening for them. But look at Cars and Yaoi and Yuri. Those don't have that many anime. If we want to have a little sadness today as a treat. When we break down the demographics this way, the ratio between shoujo and shonen anime is almost one to three. It's worse for Yosei and Senin at 1 to 8. Really let that sink in for a sec. For every one title made for young girls, there are three more being made for boys. So I guess there's no female fans for Dr. Stone or Demon Slayer, according to you, right? Because those are made for men. So women can't watch those. Let's just get them out of here. But um, Fruit Baskets, well, there's no men that watch that either, so they can be erased. Is that what we're doing here, is to make everybody look less than what they actually are? So why can't they just watch whatever the fuck they want? Why are you making this division between anime fans like there is one when there isn't? Like, you don't need to be a scientist to see that the numbers are skewed. And again, that's not actually accounting for anime that is actually good. Like, have you tried looking in the Yosei tag? Jellyfish Princess is fantastic. But I don't know what half of this nonsense is. Because you wanted to make this argument. You didn't watch any of those other series that are in the same genre because you wanted to complain that there's nothing for you specifically. It's not a female problem. It's a you being an idiot problem. But here's the thing. You hop over to the shonen tag and boom, dozens of overwhelmingly popular high budget anime. Shonen anime consistently dominates not just 
anime being made, but also anime that is popular. So we're taking this aggregate score site, which by the way I hear is kind of a joke of a website, and we're using that to prove a point that all of these shows are good. So I, I love bringing up Inuyasha because it is literally the thing that defeats you in this. Inuyasha was pretty much beloved by many, and it's only sitting at like a 7.8, which means uh, by, you know, any tuber standards, then that actually sucks, even though it was influential. But not because it's inherently better, but it's because it can afford to be good. Here is the cycle that we're in right now. Well, they do say that time is a flat circle, so let's go ahead and hear this stupid theory. Anime made for women isn't popular, so companies aren't willing to put money into making a good anime for women. Therefore, the anime being made for women has less of a budget, and then the anime being made isn't as good or as high quality. And yes, once in a while, we'll get something good that is also popular, like Fruits Basket, but that is very much an outlier. It's the exception that proves the rule. Simpho Gear, Yuru Camp, Kayon, Nan Nan Biori, Flying Witch, Kinero Mosaic, New Game, Blend S, Lucky Star, Hioka. Are we really going to skip over that? I mean, I could go even further. Little Witch Academia, Capellion. Those shows have female leads, and they're all for women if you want to make that argument. So, again, I think that you're looking at this at the wrong angle. Because everybody that actually uses the site, which is not everyone in the entire fucking world, they're going to give it a 9. But when it comes to shows like Symphogear, they may not be so apt to use the website and they give it a 7.02 out of 10. Again, my anime list isn't the end-all be-all. And if you're basing everything that you know and want to feel about this specific instance off of this, then I'm sorry to tell you, but this video is fucking stupid. And the thing is... I like shonen when it's good. I look at that list of popular shonen anime and I have to admit that I've watched a decent chunk of it. But that's also because I kind of have to. No, you don't. In fact, I already listed out a bunch of different series that have female leads or uh, women in anime and you can watch those. But instead you sit here and you complain because you don't get to watch everything that's just like the thing that you saw before. So either you can watch those things, whether it be new or old, or you can just sit here and complain on this video like you've been doing. Because for every one anime released marketed towards my gender, three more are being made for men with probably a higher budget and resulting higher quality. And that is frustratingly unfair. Well, don't blame men for that fact. It's more of a Japanese thing than it is anything else. The Japanese are the ones that make what they want to make. And if it doesn't pander or uh, cater to you in any specific way, then that's not our fault and it's not your fault. It's just how Japan's going to be. And Japan going to be how it's going to be. Statistically, women are more willing to read or watch content that is made by men or ha stars a male protagonist because uh, they have more empathy or something, and are able to more easily slip into the skin of another person despite potential barriers like gender. But also, high production, high quality good series are being made for and by men. What about Review Starlight or the latest seasons of Symphogear? All of those have relatively high budgets and they also feature women in them. But I think more men probably watch those shows because God forbid you're actually going to fucking watch them. So if women want to be able to experience that good story, we have to learn how to let it go and slip into the skin of male main characters. So what about the series that are run by women? You know, the ones that have female lead characters like Symphogear, for example. It's one of my favorite series of all time, and I don't have to experience it by putting myself in their shoes. All I have to do is sit back and watch the entertainment, and if I relate to a character, well, I guess I better relate to a woman because that's pretty much like 90% of the entire series, with the exception of maybe three male characters almost in its entirety. So, no, I don't have to have somebody be just like me for myself to enjoy the series. That's such a fucking stupid nothing point, and you're really grasping at straws. And men just 
aren't willing to do that about 90% of the time. And they don't have to because they can have their pick of the litter of shows catered towards their gender. And I hate it. So you hate that other people aren't suffering like you? Maybe it's because a lot of those people can get over the hurdle of seeing themselves in media. And unfortunately, you're not one of those people. I don't have to have a show be of a uh, of a black person as the main character because I don't fucking care. I can watch the show for what it is. Because one of the most critically acclaimed shonen anime, the gold star, that no other shonen anime can compare to is Contem Full Metal Alchemist, which was written by a woman and the industry still acts like it's a no girls allowed space. This is a straw man and you know it. Everyone likes Full Metal Alchemist because, again, they don't have to put themselves in the shoes or believe that they're a four foot nothing uh, short person. They can just enjoy the media for what it is and its storytelling. And that makes me bitter. I am bitter about this. This is why I can't take what the anime community says about good anime at face value. Then watch anime on your own and form your own opinions. I mean, you are a YouTuber. You have the energy to do all of this every single day. So if there's something that you like, then you can make your own community based off of the dumb shit that you like. I mean, it's not dumb shit. I'm just kind of being facetious, but you get exactly what I'm saying. Because even now, it's still so exclusionary. And then we get things like Sword Art Online becoming so popular with the male anime fan base that it completely revives the isekai genre and repackages it for the male gaze. And then we get spin off anime based off of that premise. And then we get anime like ReZero. Because, oh yeah, do you remember how I said I was tired from just the four isekai anime that I had seen? Well, guess what the second one I watched was? And hey, I know I said I didn't have a bone to pick with Sword Art Online, but guess what? I did watch ReZero, and I am going to pick these bones clean. Okay, so I don't ever actually do this, but I'm going to take out a good section of this video. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't know too much about ReZero, and I'm not going to sit here and listen to something stupid and vapid in my ear. So, I will leave you the timestamp. You can go there because I know uh, almost everybody's seen that show. Don't don't ever at me about it ever again. But I know everybody's pretty much seen that show. I am the outlier. I haven't seen it. But once you read some of her points, I, I guess read is the word, uh, you're going to find out that she knows nothing about the series because she always puts all the blame on Subaru. She always complains that he's mean to the women in his lives despite the fact that he keeps dying repeatedly. I only have a very limited knowledge of it because I... I did endure the first episode. I didn't care for it. It's not my kind of thing. Oh, wait, that's right. It's supposed to be because of, you know, my, my fucking male power fantasy. But again, I'll leave that section to you guys to check out. But we're going to just move on to the next part of this video that we can actually cover. I had an epiphany like a year ago during a conversation with two of my art friends who were both women. I don't remember what anime we were exactly talking about. It might have been Dr. Stone. It may have been Demon Slayer. I don't remember specifically. But the point was, I was talking about how it was good and how I was really enjoying it so far. And my friend said, oh, okay. I was waiting to see whether it was actually good or not. If you say it's good, I may check it out. And it was like something had just clicked for me. Was it that you got to interact with a real human being and that you no longer needed to be antisocial? Because I swear, through every story that you've told, probably in the, the sections before this, it sounds like you don't talk to people or you're very anxious about talking to people, which is fucking cringe. None of us had ever talked about this openly, but the three of us had independently gone through the same experience where a new shonen anime would get really popular and earn a ton of praise, but we knew there was a good chance that we probably wouldn't like it as much. So let me get this straight. You gatekeep yourself from enjoying things because you need to be very specific. And if it isn't exactly what you want it to be down to every single detail, 
well then, you might as well just not watch it. So what are your gripes against things like Sword Art Online Alicization, or even Gun Gale Online, the, the one that's actually good? Do you have any opinions on those? Because Gun Gale Online is a female anime lead. It is something that I would personally recommend. But again, you don't care about that. You want women to be dominant. You don't want there to be any equality. You want the women to actually own everything in this. You don't want anime that celebrates men and women. You want to have your fucking cake and eat it too. So we would wait until one of our friends was willing to bite that bullet and be able to tell us whether it was actually good or not. And after that experience, I wondered if that was something that maybe a lot of women who like anime were also going through. No, I wouldn't say that you're a large number. I would say that you're probably 0.1% of the people that actually watch anime that complain about not being able to get into the story because it's made for men or the show is made for women. It's because you're being fucking picky. Find a show with a female lead. If you don't like it, you don't like it. It's perfectly fine and it's acceptable. But don't sit here and say, well, it's all made for men and I'm not allowed in the boys club. You're being so fucking vapid, and I'm so sick of it. But I couldn't verify that from the YouTube anime community, because the algorithm basically never offered me any female any youtubers to watch. I know I've been very antagonistic for you the entire video, but at least let me give you this information. You're not missing anything from any tuber's opinions, I promise. Which is why I'm here in 2020 making this video that I really don't think a lot of people are going to watch. And honestly, I'm very nervous about posting. But it's something I think is important. And it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. And if I don't get it off my chest now, I will die. Stop being overdramatic. You're not going to fucking die because no one wants to hear your weird opinions on anime. Just watch whatever you enjoy and stop shitting on everybody else enjoying what they enjoy. Women enjoy every type of anime. In fact, I think that there's actually a spot that we can prove it, and I might as well do it right now. Pulling data from my anime list, users were able to put this together, which was the gender differences in anime preferences. And here, from Reddit, you can also find a graph, but you can also see the numbers that they were able to pull together. The genre preferences between men and women all show up here in this one specific spot that I want to focus on for a little bit. According to the numbers here, shown in anime, while being male-dominated at 66.4% of the sample size, women actually preferred to watch shown in anime, whereas over for shoujo, well, obviously women wanted to watch that instead, even in the case of Yaoi, where men only made up less than 30%. According to this poll, also you can see where men enjoyed hentai like Bible Black and enjoyed shoujo anime like Sabage Boo. And if you look at what women preferred, it was Pico to Chico, which is the sequel to the, you know, the Boku no Hero Academia. I'm just kidding, it's Boku no Pico. But they preferred that as their favorite. And when it came to shoujo, they liked Shugo Chara, which is another show that you would probably think is for kids, but it's ultimately not. This is, uh... <laughs> Probably incredibly petty of me, but part of the reason I even started this YouTube channel was because I was so, so tired of the male AniTube community praising whatever the new hype shown in anime of the season was, and knowing, knowing that at a glance that I wouldn't like it. And it's just kind of a frustrating situation to just have to live with. So you created a channel out of spite because you hate male anti-tubers. Listen, over here at the channel Necro13, we hate everyone regardless of whatever gender they are. So if they're male, female, trans male, trans female, if they're a fucking rock, I don't really care. If you say something stupid, you're going to get covered. I know this problem is not limited to any YouTube and it's a problem with how YouTube functions as a platform overall. But it just, it makes me sad that there aren't many popular any youtubers that are women. Maybe because their interests lie elsewhere. Women aren't generally into whatever men are into, like video games and things like that. But that's not to say that they're completely devoid of being into those things. 
there are way more female streamers that I can think of than there are men. And of course, men probably get higher view counts, but women make the most money when it comes to Twitch, if you know what I mean. Again, there are some, but not as many as men and definitely not enough in the like the video essay category, which is the part that I'm really interested in. We'll make those then. Be the change that you want to see. It's just like the anime industry itself. The stuff made by women isn't popular, so the industry isn't willing to invest in them. Thereby, the quality is lower, and things made by women continue to be unpopular. If you're so sure of that, then why is it that people like Pokimane, a woman, gets way more views and way more money than I do? Is it because of being a woman? Look forward to season two. That's about all I can really cover in this video, and again, I'll leave the timestamp in the description if you want to check out the ReZero section, because again, it also brings up the Fire Force clip that apparently people just can't get rid of out of their minds, and then I think there might be like a Dr. Stone one in there. But again, anime is made for everyone. If you listen for one minute of this person's rhetoric about how, well, this anime is made for men and this anime is made for women, and they can't share anything between them, well, that's fucking stupid. It's actually the most retarded thing I've ever heard. You know what? So while we're here, let's go ahead and be problematic. That's fucking retarded. I should be able to go to anyone and tell them that they can watch whatever show that they want that's out on TV. If you want to watch something like Yudu Camp, like me and another mutual do, then guess what? I guess we're going to get fucking comfy. But wait, it's a show that's made for women. Oh, well, not according to uh, Lady here. I, I don't fucking care what it is. It could be... Something like Violence Jack, and women might enjoy that too. There's women that are into a multitude of things, and just because you don't see it in your little niche view doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It means that you're stuck in a bubble that you need to get out of. I don't think that there's anything I can really add to the end of this video, because I'm already kind of pissed off that I covered it. But anyways, I'm not even going to put a shill segment at the end of this. No shill segment. I think you guys already get it.